All right, I'm here today to talk to you about how ChatGPT is wrecking, messing up, doing everything it can to change the way we at universities and colleges teach students and how students learn. And I wanna, in this video, tell you a little bit about this, like why it's so disruptive, why it's messing everything up in the first part. And in the second part, I'll go ahead and talk to you about how we are coping at universities and colleges these days in 2023 and dealing with you know these big changes that are happening because of ChatGPT. And finally, I wanna go ahead and end the video with some tips, some things that I can see us doing to use ChatGPT to improve education, to survive all of this, and to come out better on the other side. My own interest in ChatGPT came about because of a colleague of mine, Jason Tangen at the University of Queensland, who let us know in early December, he let our, uh, our department know basically, what was going on with ChatGPT in a very informative YouTube video, which I hope I can give you a link sometime in the description below if he gives me permission to do so. Now, in case you're wondering what ChatGPT is, it's a way for you to write in text, in a text field, to an artificial intelligence agent. And this, art, this AI agent is called uh, GPT-3. It's been around for a couple of years, I think, and it's based on just machine learning of everything that's on the internet, just trillions and trillions of bits of data that are out there. And you can write to it in a conversational style in any language, and it will go ahead and output to you as if it's just writing a conversation back to you as well. You can tell it to write your answers in Swedish or to write code for a program. It can know, it knows all sorts of languages. It can basically do and understand almost anything you type into that text field. The other thing about you should know about ChatGPT is that the underlying AI, uh, which is called GPT-3, is due for a huge update in 2023 called GPT-4. And GPT-4, I'll talk about more at the end of this video, is promising to be another game changer. It's gonna have a lot more new features on it than we have already. Let's go ahead and talk now about what you need to know about ChatGPT at the university and college level. All right, let's start with that first question about how is ChatGPT wrecking everything? Well, the New York Times just recently had an article about this very question. The end of November, as I said, is when ChatGPT was released without much warning, and we've had very little time in higher education to respond to this massive development. But what a lot of universities and colleges are doing is quickly changing the way they teach their courses and are responding as a result. And here's why. Let's take these four examples. First example, ChatGPT can be used to write admissions essays. Yes, in the United States, at colleges and universities there, as I've talked about in one of my other videos, you will have to write an admissions essay, an essay about yourself that is sent to all of your colleges or your universities. Maybe another additional essay that's about your specific interest in that college or university. Um, maybe even in response to a particular unique question, the way University of Chicago does it. But nevertheless, you have to include these essays with your application. So why not have ChatGPT do it? As you can see in this example, uh, the person prompted ChatGPT to write an essay about trying to get into Harvard as an Asian American, but making sure that the essay itself wasn't too Asian American or didn't mention it too much. And the reason is because it's anticipated that the Supreme Court later this year will basically remove race or ethnicity as a consideration by universities. And so the idea is, can you kind of sneak it into the essay somehow and maybe have an influence that way if you're a racial or ethnic minority? So you can see it's written a pretty good essay here, an admissions essay. Of course, it's, this could be fixed and done even better if it had more information about you or things that you wanted to emphasize in your essay. But this is a good example of what people could be doing right now. It's that time of year when people are submitting applications to colleges and universities for the next fall. Um, and all throughout the next coming year then, I would be really worried if I were somebody at an admissions office, whether or not these essays that we've always used as one of our major factors in determining whether or not somebody could come to our college or university is actually going to be a um, one that was written by the student or was in fact written by some sort of chatbot. The second way that ChatGPT can disrupt everything is just comes with our usual college essay or our university writing assignment. 
So I might give my students a topic and say, hey, I want you to write a 3,000 word essay that's due at the end of this semester about this particular topic, whether it's like comparing uh, the Bronte sisters style of writing or something about the history of physics. In my particular course on social neuroscience, I I've asked my students to write an essay in which they analyze a particular social behavior from four different levels of analysis and they have to go and find research that backs up their level of analysis. And you can see that this is the prompt that I used last year. And what the problem now is that ChatGPT, because it relies on this vast amount of information that it has in its AI, it can actually write that essay for the student with the same prompt. So I can go ahead and cut and paste this prompt almost word for word into chat GPT and voila, it good has an, and writes an essay. It, it gives a essay just the way I was expecting the essay to be written. This particular one that you see here, I think is okay. I think it's probably one that I would give a fairly high mark to, but with just a little bit more work on it, you can make this a really top essay. And you notice that it even includes research articles and a bibliography. So it's followed all of the requirements of my assignment without even being a person in my course and not even knowing what I've assigned or having it, you know, I told it, for example, to use Sapolsky's book, which is the main book that I use with this course. So it obviously seems to have all the knowledge about what Sapolsky writes about because it does a very good job of covering these different levels of analysis that Sapolsky has in his book. There goes the essays. If I'm gonna go ahead and assign students essays to write on their own, how can I tell possibly that these were ever written by the student or maybe they're just done by ChatGPT? Another thing has to do just with exams. And a lot of us over the last few years have started giving more of our exams and quizzes online, things that people can complete at home on their own time. So this was a really common thing that we did during the pandemic. And this means then that you can go ahead and have an online midterm exam a quiz. Um, I would maybe ask 20 questions about the readings for the week in a multiple choice format and give the students 20 minutes online to answer those questions. And I know that students could have cheated, but it would have been very hard to cheat in the given amount, the short amount of time that they had, and they would still have had to gone off and figured out, you know, what the questions were referring to and go back through their readings and so on. And so under the time pressure that, that you could give them for that exam, um, you could kind of trust that they were basically having to uh, regurgitate or tell you information that they had found themselves. But now with ChatGPT, all you have to do is feed the questions right into ChatGPT and then it answers the questions for you. Here's an example that comes from my history course. Um, what I've done for my history psychology class for years is given my students many, many study questions every week. And then what I tell them is that when you get to the final exam, I'll go ahead and take a subset of those study questions and turn them into final exam questions, short answer questions. And so you can see here, here's an example of these short answer questions. And then what I did is I just cut and pasted it into ChatGPT and said, you answer these questions. Now, it doesn't know what my syllabus is. It doesn't know what I've assigned for the readings, but it has enough information here. It knows from the stuff that's on the internet who these people are. For example, Cordelia Fine is a contemporary writer who has written a couple books about gender and, and, and uh, I talk about her in my history class. And notice it can handle that question about Cordelia Fine, even though she's living, breathing, and is putting out work right now, as well as questions about things that have been done in the past. So that means I can't use those study questions anymore to ask people about things on the final exam. Likewise, I can't ask essay questions. I used to give essay questions in, in advance. I'd say, here's like six possible essay questions. You could go ahead and prepare your answers to them beforehand, try to memorize them, show up to the final, and I would go ahead and ask the essay question. Can't do that now because they might've had ChatGPT write their essay question, memorized it, and therefore never read anything, learned anything from my entire course and just regurgitated what ChatGPT came up with in a couple minutes. And I think a fourth way that ChatGPT is really wrecking everything for us in higher education has to do with things like honors theses, master's theses, PhD dissertations, things that are long, you know, scholarly pieces of work that are like basically like a long form essay. In psychology, it, what we do when we have an honors thesis is that the student might go out and collect some data and then write up that project as a report and they have to do a literature review, talk about the methods, do the statistics, write the discussion section. How do we know now that ChatGPT isn't the author of that essay, that thesis, that PhD dissertation, if you want to go that far? 
it's really hard to know if you've given it all the right information, like the right prompts, it could do all the writing for you and it would be very hard for us to detect whether or not it was the human that did this with a couple little changes or the human wrote it from scratch. So in this next section, I want to talk about how we're coping. How are we doing this at our colleges and universities? How are we going to deal with ChatGPT in 2023? Well, I think the first way that people are dealing with it is just ignoring it and hoping that the problem goes away or at least that technology will fix it. So I do know of some academics who are planning just to keep teaching the way that they've always taught and just hope that everything works out. Or that, like I said, some sort of tool will come along to be able to detect when people are using ChatGPT to write essays or whatever it is. The question there is then, can we really do that? Now, Turnitin, which is a, a commercial product, that but which a lot of universities use, for example, to detect whether or not a, an essay was plagiarized, is now promising that sometime soon in 2023, they're gonna have a tool that will be able to give you a score telling you whether or not this assignment looks like it was written by ChatGPT. I don't know how it's really gonna do that because when I look at ChatGPT output, it's very hard for me to distinguish it from the way a human might write, especially if the human can go back and fix any of the odd sort of phrasing that the ChatGPT may have come up with. How are you gonna know then when ChatGPT wrote 80% of the sentence and 20% of the sentence was written by the human? Not only that, the ChatGPT and the AI that came up with these sentences is learning all the time new things. And it's gonna learn what the algorithms are that detect whether or not ChatGPT is fake. And so therefore it can write a better essay. It can change its way of, of responding to these questions in a way that it will be even harder for anybody to detect whether or not it was written by AI. So I don't really think this is the way to go. I think anybody who's promising technology is gonna fix it is gonna be very, very disappointed. Now, a second way that schools and universities are dealing with this problem of chat GPT is they just wanna ban it. So what they hope to do is just go ahead and you know, have an IP blocker at their university, their high school, wherever it is. I think the New York public school system and Seattle uh, recently tried to do this where they're going to make it so you can't access ChatGPT's website when you're on their campus. But of course, the problem is that the student could have a phone where they use their own data and don't have to go through the high school's uh, um, server to do that. I don't think this is going to be a very effective solution to the problem, just trying to ban it outright. A third way that we're coping is that we're just redesigning our courses in every way that we teach. We're no longer going to have, you know, take home exams. We're not going to have online quizzes or essays that you go and write about in the library or at home in your dorm room or wherever it happens to be. Things are going to change where it's going to be more in class or different kinds of assessment that are going to be used instead of the old standard ways. So maybe more things where you have to hand write answers um, in class or write an, an answer to an essay prompt in class. That'd be the only way I think you could kind of defeat ChatGPT if you want to continue to ask people to write essays for you. The other thing you could do is you could kind of come up with some new method of assessment like I'm going to do, which is I'm now, instead of having that standard essay that I always had students write individually, I'm going to have them work on a group project where they have to basically analyze the social behavior from four different levels of analysis and find research that backs it up. But they have to present it together as a group project in a video a video that's no longer than 15 minutes long, and they can choose how they want to go ahead and, and you know, give us that information in the video. Now, of course, they could use ChatGPT to write their script and to do all their background research. The, the issue there, of course, is that there's going to be two or three or four students working on this project, and if a couple of them are advocating for cheating, it's going to be a bit harder to do that when the other students don't want to do it. So I think there'll be a sort of like peer pressure involved in small groups that you'll see less cheating or using ChatGPT to do major parts of the assignment. But still, I think even if they did have the ChatGPT write a lot of the script, they're still gonna be doing a lot of work to make it sensible and presenting it in a video format. I think it'll be a way that I can kind of still see that the student's learning and I can make an assessment about whether or not they've actually mastered the material. Now, the fourth way that colleges are coping with this is they're going to go ahead and start using ChatGPT as a tool. And I think this is probably the most optimistic, progressive way of going about dealing with the whole AI problem, which is to say, if we can't fight AI, let's use AI in the classroom 
use it as part of teaching and learning. So that means that maybe have activities or assignments in which the students use ChatGPT to maybe come up with discussion questions or debates or to help them begin their assignment and they fix the rest of the assignment by hand or whatever it is. Now that kind of promise is interesting and I think that leads us to the third section of this video in which I go ahead and talk about some ways that we could capitalize or use ChatGPT to improve things. So I've got five things here. I can go ahead and give you five examples of how ChatGPT and AI can be used to benefit you. The first example is that it can be used to develop study questions. You might remember that, or you might have seen in other courses, that you can always buy these like study guides or find study questions that were written by somebody to help you study the material as you get ready for a final exam, maybe even past exam questions, right? Well, the thing is about ChatGPT is you can go ahead and ask it to generate the question. So in this example, you can see that I'm asking it to write up a multiple choice test with 10 items and give me the answers to each of the 10 items um, about B.F. Skinner and operant conditioning. And I just give it that prompt and in a couple minutes it's written 10 decent multiple choice questions with the answers there. I could have said don't give me the answers and then come back later and figure out what the answers are. But the nice thing is that I've now got a study guide. I got a way I can practice questions easily about any particular topic. And again, the more information you give it in the prompt about what you specifically want the questions to be about, the better the questions are going to be. The second thing you can do is you could use ChatGPT to suggest ideas for papers. You know, like if you're coming up with an assignment and you're trying to figure out, uh, you know, I don't really know what I want to write about. I, I, the, my professor says I have to write something about free will. What could I write about free will? And you could go ahead and ask ChatGPT to come up with some suggestions for your topic. And then as a third example, one of the things you could do after you pick that topic, you could say, ChatGPT, create an outline for a paper based on that topic. And so you can see here, I've just asked it to write an outline. And now I've got an outline about this particular topic. It gives me something I can work with. Um, I can go ahead and write all the sentences out, figure out the paragraphs and all that kind of stuff. But ChatGPT has provided the framework for me to get going. And even what I can do is ask ChatGPT then to give me some references that I might want to go check. And as you see here, I prompted it to, uh, to give me some references that I could include in my paper, my assignment. You could also use ChatGPT to check your grammar, although we already have AI bots that do that. For instance, Grammarly that I've talked about in another video that I really like very much is you can go ahead and give Grammarly your assignment. And it's basically an AI bot that goes through and, and checks your writing for you and helps you with your grammar. Make sure, for instance, the subject and the verb uh, match up and that kind of thing. And the last thing is probably the most compelling case I've seen about how you could use chat GPT is that you got to remember not only does it know different kinds of human languages, it can also write in different computing languages. And so I could ask it to write up code for me, syntax if I'm in a computer science course or if I'm even writing something in R for statistical analysis. So here in this example, I've come up with a really just a little fictional example here involving five happy faces, five sad faces, and my participants make ratings about those faces. And I want to write the R code for how I would go ahead and analyze those data. And you can see here that ChatGPT is able to handle this very well. It writes it in R. I could then take this code and cut and paste it, make modifications to it in R and run the analysis. Likewise, I could use it to write Python scripting for an experiment that I'm going to have where I want to go ahead and um, ask it to tell people about how many days that they have left on earth given what their birthday it was and what their name is. And so these kinds of questions could be easily turned into a Python script. I don't have to know how to write in Python. I got the language there, take the code, paste it into some Python compiler, and I've got everything written already. So again, this is like stuff that's helping me with my work, tasks that I'm not necessarily getting marked about, or um, it's just like one of the many small little tasks that take up a lot of time that help me move on to the thing where I really want to put my brain power. And so that's why I think that ChatGPT in the end could be really, really great for all of us if we can figure out how to harness its power, how we can use it for the future. And that leads me to the final thing which I wanted to talk about just briefly is what's going to happen in the future. Now the developers behind uh, the GPT-3 have said that GPT-4 is going to be coming out soon. 
And some rumors are that it's going to be multimodal. That is, that GPT-3 is only text-based, right? So you can only write text in this chat GPT and get your answers. But multimodal means that it'll be able to handle audio and visual stuff like pictures and movies and film clips and so on. That all that kind of stuff be inputted and put into the AI as well. So if it's multimodal, that means it's really going to open up to even more ways of analyzing, thinking about things that are out there in the world. Um, the other thing about this is that it means then that it's going to be even more sophisticated and the interactions then might be even harder for us to detect when ChatGPT or whatever its analog is going to be in the future um, when, it, when it puts out something, knowing whether or not this is real or not. And so it's going to lead to all sorts of interesting ethical issues about how students and researchers are going to handle things in the future. Like, is it ethical for me as an author on a scientific paper to use ChatGPT to write up my research paper? You know, maybe it's got the machine learning to figure out exactly what it takes to get into science or nature, how to write the right research article with this particular data set, and boom, I go ahead and have ChatGPT or whatever the AI is to write up this paper that I sent to Nature. What should I do about that? Should I go ahead and, and mention that ChatGPT was my co-author on this? And some journals are already starting to take a stance where they're going to ban it or say that you need to properly cite it or mention that the, the ChatGPT was used. Again, so many questions, so many things are going to be happening in the very near future now because of this huge wrecking ball that ChatGPT is that is coming in and just affecting everything in colleges and universities. So I hope you found that useful to kind of think about, you know, why this is the problem, why, how we're currently dealing with the problem, and what I think are some solutions, things that we could use ChatGPT to make our lives better at the university and college level. So if you like this video, I hope that you'll think about subscribing to it now and um, maybe even giving me a like and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Thanks.